Welcome to part 3 of my 3D printer build log. The printer is nearly finished and I can already smell the molten plastic, so let's get going. I started by adding a cable chain, which will guide the cables of the X-axis stepper motor as well as these of its end stop. It will also help to minimize abrasion and keep the cables from overbending. The cable chain gets attached directly to the carriage and will later be mounted to the frame. But before that, the wires also get a special treatment. After I removed the pin housing, I started to twist them in pairs. This will help to reduce any electromagnetic interference. Additionally, I then use braided sleeving to protect the wires and provide a clean look. I have to admit that I was a bit too aggressive with my lighter as I was trying to heat up the shrinking tube. But it made me thinking, what happens when a cable fails or there's another source of fire? Will the sleeving withstand the flames? Only one way to find out. Okay, in terms of fire control, this wasn't the best upgrade. But hey, at least you could tell that your printer is burning because the whole house would smell like burning plastic. Well, a 3D printer might always have the smell of burning plastic, but that smell was 10 times worse than normal. So let's just hope that everything goes right for now and we will care for the fire security in a future video. We will now care for all the cables of the print heads as well as the bone tubes for the filament.
You just saw me adding two simple MOSFET boards. The left one lets me control five outputs for low power stuff like LEDs, fans and the electromagnet, while the right one with its big heatsinks is going to control the heat bed. And yes, it would be much smarter if the heatsinks were facing upwards so that the hot air can move up unrestricted. Always double check your layout. Next up, I had to do all the cable managing on the back of the printer. This took so much time as I had to adjust every cable, make them longer or shorter, add the sleeving and check every connector because some of them did not work properly. But thanks to the magic of video editing, I can at least save your time. As you can see, I added a terminal with some wire clamp connectors down here, so I can detach the wires of the power supply very easily to switch it out or to transport the printer. And I also added some ferrite cores to the motor and heater cables, which will help to reduce any high frequent electrical noise. So, the printer is nearly ready for its first print job, but we will cover this in the next part. I hope I see you there, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.